Hi everybody, I'm here with the lovely Julianne and today we are exploring the exotic as it says on the sign behind us and we are at Archipelago ready to try some food that we've never tried before. Uh, they have quite interesting things on the menu. Just things that you wouldn't exactly think to put in front of you for dinner but um, we're apprehensive but excited aren't we Chrissy? Yeah. yeah. We are up for the challenge but I mean this this restaurant is really popular and I'm sure the food's going to be amazing. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's go. So I'm now here with Dan, who's the general manager at this lovely restaurant. So Dan, how long has this restaurant actually been here? Well, we've been going in London for about 14 years now. In okay. this, we moved into this site about three years ago, where we moved from up the road just for a bigger premises. I mean, there's always been a demand for what we do, but obviously it's quite a niche market. I, I, people often say, why don't we expand? Why don't we open another place? Honestly, I don't think there's space in London for two of us. So tell us about some of the unusual food that you serve here that we're not used to. Uh, there's a long list of it, crocodile, python, kangaroo, alpaca, uh, obviously the insects, scorpions, worms, crickets, locusts, yeah, a, a lot of different stuff. And why are they so good to eat though? I mean they're ridiculously healthy, high in fibre, vitamins, minerals, low in, some are low in fat, and some of them are incredibly good sources of omega-3 as well. So yeah, generally healthy, healthy, healthy. So Dan, what about people that say that you shouldn't really be serving things like zebras and endangered species? What would you say? Well, I mean, the thing is, obviously, we're working within the EU. There, there's incredibly tight regulations on what we can and can't import. And the zebra is a good example. There are, I think, five species of zebra. Some of them are endangered, some aren't. We're obviously not eating the endangered ones. That would be ridiculous. But the thing is, is the zebra is a wild animal. They're not being farmed. You know, they're having the best life they could possibly have as a zebra. And they're part of a regulated culling program. There are too many zebras. And regardless of whether we buy the meat or not, those zebras are going to die because they have to be controlled for farmland. We shouldn't really waste anything, should we? Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're just making use of a resource which is in existence already. What would you say is your most popular dish here? Crocodile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's definitely it's just one of those things that is so unusual. And at the end yeah. of the day, zebra is a red meat. Uh, there, there's obviously differences between it and beef and lamb, but it is still a red meat. The crocodile is just something more alien. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like you're eating a dinosaur. No. I mean, it's just one of those things I think that you just have to try. You can't really describe it to anyone. Yeah. Someone has to actually come in and, exactly. and have come, it. Come here and try it. Yes. Then you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so guys, I'm going to be trying the crocodile and we also have the love bug salad here, which is mealworm, uh, cricket and a couple of other insects there, which again, we've never tried before. So let's, I will let you know how they taste. And yeah, I'm going to be having the python salad with some wasabi. Yeah. Okay. One, <laughs> two, three. Now, I, I did say earlier that I've never tried the insects. I tried them. Yeah. Julianne loved them. Good. You? For me, it's a strange experience, but I think it's that psychological... You were telling me earlier about the psychological thing, that sometimes it is a more of a psychological thing about yeah. eating insects than the actual taste, because yeah. they didn't taste bad. So, Dan, tell us about your, your experience as a chef as well. But to be honest, I was classically French trained, which is a little bit different from this. But, yeah, no, through, through my career, I went from French, did Italian, Moroccan, lots of different foods, but still ending up here, it's a learning curve. It's very Something completely different then? Yeah, no, nothing prepares you for this. It's just, uh, I mean, I have probably 400 cookbooks at home from all over the world. Uh, Russian, welcome to the table. Uh, yeah, it's just lots and lots of research. And then for me, figuring out what oddities from different countries work well together. That's kind of what we like to do is a global fusion. I like to take bits and pieces from different cuisines and meld them together. Okay. Well, definitely amazing. You've got it spot on. Thank you so much for a lovely meal. Thank you. Thanks a lot.